Welcome to this session. In this session, I am going to teach about this uh, blood on the whole. Okay, we will cover the red blood cell, white blood cell, platelet, their formations, their composition, each and every aspect, the clotting mechanism, and everything. Okay, so let's start. Uh, you know, in physiology, the bl blood is very important area. You need to understand. Okay. Coming to the learning objective, first we will discuss about the composition and physical characteristics of blood. Okay, uh, then uh, the, we will study about erythrocytes, that's uh, red blood cells, okay, and their disorders. Then we will see about leukocyte, that's a white blood cell, and their disorders. Then we will uh, uh, discuss about the hemostasis and its disorders okay. hemostasis means clotting mechanism and its disorder and we will also have a discussion about the ABO grouping system okay and the RH blood grouping system okay so coming to the functions of the blood the main role of uh, blood is uh, distribute transport regulation and protection okay the main role is the transport or uh, transport of uh, gases, transport of hormones, transport of electrolytes, okay. Then regulation, uh, thermoregulation is there, chemoregulation is there, then uh, hormonal regulation is there, many regulations, okay. Then white blood cells, they do the protection, white blood cells, they will do the protection. This is what you have to understand here, protection of the blood cells understand so these are all the main uh, things so let's see what is uh, what you will see in the distribution okay one is uh, transport for example uh, we breathe in in the breathing air the oxygen is going into the alveolar membrane that is inside the lung there the Red blood cell in the blood will pick this uh, oxygen and give the carbon dioxide. So if you look at this membrane gases exchange in the respiratory system, you will understand about this. Then you eat all the proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals. Those subs, uh, food subs are absorbed in the GI tract and then it is taken to the liver. So through the blood, blood is uh, transporting all these things. Okay then there are many metabolic waste for example urea creatinine all these are the metabolic waste so these metabolic wastes are transported by the blood okay then endocrine hormones as you know the pituitary uh, uh, thyroid adrenal gland all these glands uh, they give the secretions into the bloodstream so through blood only these hormones keeps traveling okay then regulation so what do you mean by regulation so you know the blood is the main uh, structure it's it's uh, called as a fluid connective tissue it's an example of fluid connective tissue it regulates the body temperature okay so whatever uh, uh, body temperature the body has the blood also has okay so it distributes the heat for example if you uh, expose the skin to the sunlight through the blood that heat energy is going inside the body okay then blood maintains the normal ph in the body tissues okay then uh, what's the ph it's a balance between acid and base normal ph is 7 below 7 it is acidic and above 7 it is alkaline okay the blood ph is around 7.4 which is slightly alkaline it is not uh, acidic it is not uh, neutral it is slightly alkaline okay and you know the fluid volume is maintained by the blood you know the norm our average adult has around 5 liters of blood this volume of blood is maintained by the blood proteins okay and you know the mechanism hydrostatic pressure that is taking place in the kidney during the urine filtration and reabsorption and all this stuff okay coming to the protection you know uh, blood uh, has a lot of functions in, as far as protection is concerned one is the blood clotting this clotting is very important for example if a person faints and if the blood vessel is cut 
and if he is awake he can see the blood bleeding blood and he can stop whereas if he is fainty if he fainted and the blood vessel is damaged what are naturally the blood clotting mechanism will take place within 8 minutes by activating this plasma proteins and the platelets to initiate the clot formation okay then prevention of infection is a major role like you know the wbc white blood cells in the blood which is around uh, around 2500 cells per cubic ml of blood you know this is uh, the wb cell is called as a soldiers for the body okay they fight against bacteria and virus and great immunity okay if you look at the blood you know when you collect uh, 100 ml of blood in that 45 uh, ml will be uh, red blood cells okay then 55 ml will be plasma okay in that few layer of uh, cells are this white blood cells okay what is this uh, we draw the, we take the blood from the vein and we add anticoagulants we call it we call it as etda okay there are many anticoagulants heparin is there uh, etda is there and other anticoagulants are there so what we do we mix anticoagulant that means it will not allow the blood to clot and then we put this uh, collected blood in the centrifuge machine okay there are it, it rotates around uh, uh, 300 400 500 times per minute okay when it is rotating all the uh, blood cells will settle down and that there will be a white blood cell and platelet uh, buffer coat and then the remaining is the plasma part okay plasma and the serum what is the difference between plasma and serum we will discuss that okay so these are the cellular part that is 45 percent and the fluid part is 55 percent okay so this is what you have to understand so blood is a sticky opaque opaque means uh, it doesn't allow light okay fluid with a metallic taste color varies from scarlet to dark red okay oxygen red the if you cut the arteries and see the blood it will be scarlet red in color whereas if you cut the vein and see the blood you can see uh, dark red which is oxygen uh, poor blood it's called deoxygenated blood okay as i told you ph is around 7.4 temperature is 38 degree which is normal body temperature blood accounts for uh, approximately 8 percent of the body weight average volume of the blood is 4 to 5 to 6 liters in male and 4 to 5 liters in females so on an average 5 liters of blood is present in the adult body okay 5 liters of blood is present in the adult body then coming to the plasma of the blood it contains proteins that is albumin globulin then fibrinogen okay that is a clotting protein albumin globulin and fibrinogen these are all the plasma proteins okay then non protein type substance non protein type substance are the nitrogen substance like urea creatinine this is nothing but a metabolic waste okay then organic nutrients are glucose carbohydrates and amino acids okay these are all the uh, come present these are present in the blood plasma and then electrolytes like sodium potassium calcium chloride bicarbonate these are all the five major important electrolytes that always blood need to have it in the normal level okay then respiratory gases like you have the oxygen and carbon dioxide that is uh, picked by the red blood cell and it is transported okay so these are all the uh, composition of blood as i told you 45 percent is cell so what cell red blood cell in that 99 percent is red blood cell one percent is white blood cell and uh, another one percent is uh, platelet and uh, white blood cell okay so if you see red blood cell they are the major component of the cellular part of the blood whereas white blood cell you have two categories granulocytes and a granulocytes okay these two are the 
granulocytes why there are granules present inside the cell okay that's why it's called as uh, granulocytes and the granules are absent that's why it's a granulocytes okay so uh, that we will see the separate classification then as far as uh, plasma is concerned it consists of albumin globulin pro fibrinogen protein why when the albumin level will increase when there is viral infection when the uh, fibrinogen level will increase when there is increased clotting mechanism okay so uh, when this uh, 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 solutes will increase like uh, electrolytes will increase when there is kidney damage okay so when this wbc cell will increase when there is any uh, bacterial infection okay in the specifically the lymphocyte cell count will increase only when there is tubercular infection when there is inflammation with the infection with the mycobacterium tubercular okay or mycobacterium leprae okay now let's see what is the composition of the form uh, the blood cells one is the wbc white blood cells which is called as leukocytes and other is the red blood cell which is called as erythrocytes and platelets is also called as a thrombocytes these platelets are responsible for blood clotting okay so uh, they these cells are uh, having certain life span for example erythrocytes they have uh, they live for 120 days they live for 120 days okay so after 120 days these red blood cells that is erythrocytes will die and finally the bone marrow will release new red blood cells it's a continuous cyclical process cells keep dying cells keep produ producing the bone marrow okay then what is hematocrit so uh, there is something before you know what is hematocrit you should know the hemoglobin what is hemoglobin it is the uh, uh, percentage of uh, uh, hemoglo heme and the globin that is present in the red blood cell okay suppose for example the hemoglobin is 10 for a person the hematocrit will be three times higher it will be uh, 1 is to 3 okay that means 30 Uh, is the hematocrit value okay so for example cellular elements of blood are quite evenly dispersed throughout the plasma however upon centrifugation heavier cellular elements settle to bottom light plasma rises to the top okay large proportion of cells are erythrocytes the hematocrit are packed cell volume okay so this pcv that is the packed cell volume is also called as a hematocrit which is 3 is to 1 okay so erythrocyte if it is 1 the packed cell volume will be 3% 3 times higher okay represent the it represents the percentage of total blood that is occupied by erythrocyte okay plasma accounts for the remaining volume so normal hematocrit is 42% that means what if you uh, divide the hematocrit by 3 okay for example if you divided the divide the 42 by 3 the hemoglobin is 40 okay so the white blood cells and platelets form a thin creamy layer the buffy coat between the erythrocyte and the plasma membrane plasma layers okay so you can see here this is the buffy coat this is the plasma uh, and this is the red blood cells erythrocytes okay okay now mm, coming to the red blood cell you know the nucleus is absent in the red blood cell the red blood cell is a a nucleated cell okay so suppose and it is like the shape of a donut okay you can see this is a shape of a donut which is a biconcave shape which is a biconcave shape okay so the red blood cell is filled with hemoglobin a protein that function to uh, to transport the gases so the hemoglobin is the one which ping picks the gas and it deliver to lung and take the oxygen from the lung okay so there are other proteins such as septrice 
spectrin attached to the plasma membrane uh, that gives erythroblasts their flexibility allows them to change shape as necessary okay you know what suppose if you find a red blood cell with a nucleus what does it mean if you find a red blood cell with nucleus it means it is immature cell the immature cell uh, red blood cells when it grows it sees and it kicks the nucleus out okay when the red blood cell is mature okay next uh, the erythrocyte means red blood cell is an example of complementary of the structure and function. Erythrocytes are dedicated to respiratory gas transport. The main function is to transport the oxygen from uh, lung to all parts of the body and the carbon dioxide from all parts of the body to the lung. So the normal range in the men is 4.7 to 6.1 million cells. The normal range in women is 4.2 to 5.4. Why? the hemoglobin and the erythrocyte count is less for women because they have blood loss every month during the menstrual cycle and that's why the red blood cell is count is less okay so hemoglobin allosterically binds with oxygen so it is binding with oxygen and it is traveling okay hemoglobin is composed of protein globin made up of two alpha and two beta chains each bound by a heme, heme group okay so this is the structure of the hemoglobin okay uh, you can see the ferrous there is iron as well as the uh, globin the protein part okay so this is the chemical structure of the hemoglobin what you can see there is something called oxyhemoglobin and deoxyhemoglobin the red blood cell that is carrying the oxygen molecule we call it as oxyhemoglobin the red blood cell which is carrying the carbon dioxide molecule we call it a deoxyhemoglobin okay Car carbaminohemoglobin is a car bound to carbon dioxide loading takes place in the tissues okay normal hemoglobin is 14 to 18 gram per deciliter in male whereas in female it is 12 to 16 whereas in the newborn it is around 20 to 24 okay in newborn it is around 20 to 24 then uh, there are 140 to 180 grams per liter there are 140 to 180 grams per liter okay now let's go to the hemopoiesis what is hemopoiesis hemopoiesis is uh, it is uh, uh, protection of blood cells it is protection of blood cells okay so protection of erythrocyte means it is erythropoiesis protection of leukocyte means it is leukopoiesis protection of thrombopoiesis means it is thrombo protection of thrombocyte is thrombopoiesis so overall protection of blood cell we call it as hemopoiesis or hematopoiesis whatever it is okay you know all the blood cells are formed in the bone marrow but for the newborn baby the bone marrow is absent so the hemopoiesis for the newborn baby is taking place in the liver and spleen whereas the hemopoiesis in the adult is taking place in the bone marrow okay the stem cells that is present in the red bone marrow called hemocytoblast that gives rise to all formed elements of the blood i will show you that algorithm so that you will be able to understand okay so mm, what happens in uh, bone marrow in bone marrow there will be all the cell all the, this uh, i mean all the bone marrow will have this kind of cell that's called as a hemocytoblast then that matures and changes into pro erythroblast you see you can see a big nucleus here now uh, this pro erythroblast will develop into basi basophilic erythroblast then this uh, basophilic erythroblast will change into polychromatic erythroblast then this will the nucleus will still shrink and change into orthochromatic erythroblast finally at the stage of reticulocyte the uh, nucleus will be kicked out okay suppose if a patient is uh, uh, giving blood the, if a person is giving blood 
donation you can see lots of uh, immature reticulocytes that is the immature uh, blood cells that will be roaming in the uh, blood okay so that means what there is more amount of immature uh, erythrocytes okay so that is why if you see uh, there are few percentage of red blood cells with uh, nuclear that means that they are immature red blood cells okay if there is if you see a nucleus in the red blood cell it is immature uh, red blood cells and only in the phase 3 when it is changing to reticulocyte that time the nucleus will be kicked out that time the nucleus will be kicked out okay regulation and requirements for blood formation erythropoiesis is controlled by uh, is done hormonally controlled okay the kidney is secreting an hormone called erythropoietin okay so this erythropoietin that is secreted by the kidney will come and kick the bone marrow but apart from that there should be good iron normal level of iron amino acid and vitamin b complex then only the blood production will take place okay there are some drugs like chlorophenicol it goes and directly affects the uh, it goes and directly affects the blood uh, bone marrow okay when the bone marrow is damaged then the patient start to become anemic because there is no erythropoiesis done in the uh, bo bone marrow because it is affected by the bone marrow toxic drug okay so then the hormonal control of erythropoiesis as i told you when there is hypoxia that is when a person is living in the mountain level high high level of mountain then also there is low oxygen level okay suppose if a person's lung is completely damaged only 10 20 percent of the lung is present then also the patient suffers from hypoxia this hypoxia will trigger the kidney to produce erythropoietin this erythropoietin will reach the bone marrow and make the erythrose uh, red blood cell to produce okay so this is how the bone cells are produced then uh, hypoxia due to decrease rbc there are chances for uh, release of erythropoietin by the kidney then decrease oxygen availability as i told you in a higher altitude people living in higher altitude they also so have high hemoglobin then increased tissue damage for oxygen okay uh, if the more amount of erythropoiesis formation of blood cells is taking place then red blood cell will be uh, uh, red blood cell count in the circulating blood will be increased then oxygen carrying ability of the blood will be increased okay so these are the uh, these are the various uh, uh, things that is taking place in the uh, erythropoiesis now we will see the uh, erythropoietin mechanism for regulating erythroplas uh, erythropoiesis okay we speak when we speak about the erythropoietin hormone that is secreted in the kidney and how it regulates the formation of red blood cell okay so now what you uh, we have to do is whenever there is the blood oxygen level is normal the erythropoietin is not released okay so now when the blood oxygen level reduces how hypoxia is a decreased oxygen level in the blood okay it can be due to decreased rbc or decreased amount of hemoglobin or decreased availability of oxygen in the environment all these are the factors that can lead to condition called hypoxia which is reduced uh, uh, oxygen level in the blood okay so what happens immediately in these conditions will trigger the kidney to release erythropoietin okay kidney is the organ that is secreting the erythropoietin hormone this erythropoietin will go to the bone marrow and activate this uh, uh, stem cells that is the uh, uh, immature i mean the stem cells that produces the red blood cells 
and thereby the red blood cells are produced and it comes into the blood stream so when the red blood cell count increases it picks more amount of oxygen from the lung and it uh, supplies the normal blood uh, oxygen level to all the tissues it supplies the normal oxygen level to the tissues so this is how the uh, erythropoietin at the end the release of erythropoietin by the kidney is important to produce uh, red blood i mean increase the red blood cell so whenever there is kidney damage the erythropoietin is not uh, released and the patient suffers from anemia that's why we have to inject artificial erythropoietin uh, in the form of injection okay so as i told you each red blood cells will live for 120 days okay so what happened this old uh, erythroblast that is red blood cells will not be fragile and they become very rigid cell membrane will become rigid so during this time what happens they will be uh, they cannot pass traverse this microscopic blood vessels in this spleen and the liver okay so this spleen and liver will catch this uh, uh, mature rbcs and crush them okay once the red blood cell is crushed the hemoglobin comes out of the red blood cell and this hemoglobin is broken separately into heme and globin okay so this heme will be converted into bilirubin and it will be filtered in the liver that's how the fecal matter is becoming yellow in color okay whereas the globin it becomes the plasma protein like uh, albumin globin and fibrinogen no so this globin globin will become the globin and it increases the viscosity of the blood okay so this is how by the uh, by the by filtering the heme in the blood it is the yellow color pigment that is a bilirubin is produced in the liver okay this is what you have to that system is called as reticulo endothelial system okay where the the hemoglobin in the mature rbc cells is uh, coming out from the red blood cells and is broken into heme and globin separately that heme is converted into bilirubin by the liver and it is filtered okay so suppose suddenly if more uh, red blood cells die there will be more hemoglobin so more hemoglobin is present then the patient's uh, eye uh, conjunctiva mouth everything will become yellow in color so if it is yellow in color that's a condition called jaundice that's a condition called as a jaundice okay anemia is nothing but reduced blood hemoglobin okay anemia is has abnormal low oxygen carrying capacity or anemia describes any condition in which the number of erythrocytes or the amount of hemoglobin per erythrocyte is less so all these things will lead to uh, reduced oxygen transport capacity okay so anemia can be can be obtained by anemia can come by blood loss in accident or uh, if there is bone marrow suppression okay that's what you call the destruction of red blood cells uh, or bone marrow suppression okay by any bone marrow toxic drugs okay where the red blood cell is unable to be produced then destruction of rbcs for example if for example a positive blood if you give b negative blood the uh, rbcs antigen surface antigen of the rbcs will fight each other and both the rbcs will die so there will be more destruction of blasting of rbc cells and more amount of uh, the patient becomes anemic in fact okay then blood loss so uh, this is called as hemorrhagic anemia so blood loss can be by uh, road traffic accident or bleeding in the rectum or bleeding in the stomach or uh, bleeding in the gums anywhere okay anywhere any place where there is blood loss we call it, the patient leads to hemorrhagic anemia okay then not enough blood produce cells produced in the uh, body for example in iron deficiency anemia the blood cells will be present but hemoglobin percentage will be less in the 
then pernicious anemia due to decreased vitamin b12 renal anemia caused by lack of erythropoietin hormone aplastic anemia is due to destruction or inhibition of red bone marrow okay by due to certain bone marrow toxic drugs chemicals or ionizing radiations okay so likewise there are um, these are the different stages like for example during the production of rbc's it, uh, the stem cell is converted into proerythroblast then it divides in, changes into basophilic erythroblast then polychromatophil erythroblast then orthochromatic uh, erythroblast reticulocyte and then it will be maturing into erythrocyte so the reticulocyte stage only the nucleus will start to go out of the cell okay so if it is microcytic hypochromic anemia the hemoglobin is less okay if the sickle cell anemia is that the red blood cell will become like a sickle and it will not have enough amount of surface area to catch the oxygen molecule okay megaloblastic anemia is abnormal uh, size of the uh, uh, cell then erythroblast fetalis this is a condition where the mother and the child is having the blood incompatibility okay we have we can speak a lot about erythroblast fetalis i'll tell you very simple just keep it in mind rh negative okay there is you will know what is rh it is positive or negative okay blood a positive b positive b a negative b negative you say no so the positive negative is uh, determined uh, from uh, monkey called rhesus macaca so that's why it is named as rh positive or negative antigen that is present in the surface of the cell uh, red blood cell okay so this erythroblast fetalis what happens when a rh negative female marries rh positive male what happens the child that is growing inside the uterus will be having positive blood and the mother's blood will be negative so till the uh, time of delivery the baby is safe because the placenta is a super filter in the whole world that will not allow any antigen to pass to the child okay but during the time of blood when the placenta is disturbed few amount of negative rh blood from the mother goes to the child thereby there is war between each uh, red blood cells and the red blood cells will blast okay leading to increased he bilirubin formation in the child body that leads to coma also okay that's what we call it as erythroblast fetalis so rh negative female should marry only rh negative male there is no problem with rh negative male he can marry anyone okay so this is a condition called erythroblast fetalis okay so then uh, thalassemia there is another condition where there is faulty globin chain in the hemoglobin okay so uh, so in this case what happens more number of red blood cells will be destroyed then sickle cell anemia as i told you the cell shape will be like a shape of the sickle okay polycythemia means increased rbc's the, when the rbc level it's around 4 million cells okay 4 to 5 million when the rbc cells are more will cause the condition as polycythemia vera so this in this app what happens the viscosity of the blood is increased okay and the platelets also will be increased okay so there is uh, there are two types one is polycythemia vera and secondary polycythemia polycythemia vera is uh, due to abnormal red blood cells production the bone marrow due to bone marrow cancer the patient will have increased rbc's and hematocrit level okay where secondary polythemia is due to less oxygen availability and increased erythropoietin production in the high altitudes okay so these are all the things you have to know about the red blood cells next in the next lecture we will start with the white blood cells that is the leukocyte